You're really nuts about me, aren't you? I love him dearly. Where is he? I'm on me, TV. They love me. Me, TV. My name is Lisa Welchel. You might recognize me from my time on television. Now I'm traveling the country, meeting people with the most amazing collections we can find. Do you know how many individual pieces you have? Over 100,000. What? I bring in experts to appraise these treasures and hope to make a deal with our collector to trade one of their precious gems for an elusive item that's been on their wish list. It's amazing the way you have put this all together. Will there be a trade? It's the collector's call. with store owner of Applejack's Toys, Alan Singleton, who has his own private army of G.I. Joes, a collection that began almost 40 years ago. I started collecting G.I. Joe toys in the 1980s, mainly because at the time, they were the best toys in the market. Alan has brought along his wife, Diana, a fellow toy collector and co-commander of their toy empire. Alan is very silly. He's fun to be around. He's always joking. I mean, we built a whole business around old toys. Joining us in the G.I. Joe bunker is our expert and general appraiser, Kate Martin. I think Alan's collection deserves a museum around it. It is so incredibly thoughtfully curated. Kate will appraise Alan's Joe collection, and she's come reporting for duty with an item to trade. But will Alan add this new toy to his ranks? As always, it's the collector's call. Alan, where are we? I mean, this is like a bunker. <laughs> it's very much like a bunker. <laughs> Probably because of the ceiling height and a lot There's to do with the army toys. A lot of army stuff yeah. around here. How did you start collecting? I was a big, big fan of Star Wars toys because I was born in 1975. I was buying every figure I possibly could. I was at Sears one day, and I couldn't find any Star Wars toys that I didn't already have. And I looked over at this one G.I. Joe toy, and I thought, it's not Star Wars, but that guy could be a pilot for one of my Star Wars ships. <laughs> and that 20-minute car ride home, I was ready to just throw away my Star Wars toys just after playing with that one G.I. Joe figure. I was hooked. A oh, great story. How old were you when you got your first G.I. Joe? I was eight years old. Perfect age for G.I. Joe. When you met Alan, I mean, he came with, like, hundreds of other men. What do you think, Diana? How were you with that? <laughs> well, when we first got together, we lived in a smaller apartment. And when we bought this house, I said, OK, you can have part of the basement for this. And it just kind of exploded. There are things I could do with that basement. There's storage I could use that for. But you know, he loves it. <laughs> do you know how many individual pieces you have? Over 100,000. What? 100,000. Hundred thousand items. I think that may be the most items we've ever had in a collection. How are you going to ever evaluate this? I have no idea. I'm well familiar with GI Joe, but I was a little intimidated walking into your collection because this is one of the finer collections I've seen. I'm really good at what I do, but if there's anybody that's going to know it better than me, it's going to be him. Well, I think we should go ahead and start looking at this collection. OK. So what makes this particular item special? Well, Snake Eyes is special because he is probably the most popular character in G.I. Joe. So he's not your average Joe? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> so is this your original one, or did you get no, this No, I bought this off of a good friend who wanted to upgrade because his wasn't nice enough. How much did you pay for it? He said, I'll sell it to you for what I paid for okay. it. I literally bought it 10 years after he bought it. Mm -hmm. So he paid 20 years ago $350. And he didn't charge the appreciation value. $350, what do you think? Well, it would have sold for $299 or $399 when it first came out. Isn't that crazy? Wow. <laughs> so you would think for $350, come on, that's a lot of money. Yeah. It's in good condition. It's not in great condition. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the carded guys. And the card is this package. The card mm -hmm. is the packaging, mm -hmm. yes. The card is probably more important than the figurine. 
this is original. Mm -hmm. Little bit of denting, little bit of tearing at the top. Honestly, I was thinking in the nine to twelve hundred dollar range for this piece, but the denting is a little worse than I thought it was, and it's starting to lift. So mm -hmm. you've got to be careful with that. But if you tried to sell it, probably six to eight hundred dollars. How do you feel about that? Does that feel fair? Yeah. I mean, it's not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's for sale. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There you go, Diane. This G.I. Joe aircraft carrier is seven and a half feet long, and it's the largest toy ever made. Wow. Urban legend is the guy that designed it for Hasbro, they laughed at him and said, if you can get it produced under 100 bucks, go ahead. And so he did. He contacted different plastic companies from all over the United States so shipping would be less. How do you get an aircraft carrier? My brother, who is six years older than me, was with my mother holiday shopping, and they had two G.I. Joe vehicles in the shopping cart. And as they went around an end cap, they saw an aircraft carrier on clearance for $66 because a forklift went through the box. My brother, who was 12 or 13 at the time, opened it up and made sure everything was fine, and he flipped out. He's like, oh, 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 you could get an aircraft carrier. She was like, well, okay. <laughs> and then that Christmas, I opened it. I was really excited. It was like, I couldn't so believe it. So they got it. it for you? Yeah, it was mine. That's brother. so sweet of your brother. Well, the sweetest thing was watching me put it together and it'd be seven and a half feet. Right. And then watching my mom smack my brother senselessly <laughs> for brother allowing him to talk her into buying a seven foot thing for our house. Okay, so you got it for $66, you got it for Christmas. So how much is this seven foot long toy worth? Do you have the broken box still? I do have an aircraft carrier box. You do? It's not in great condition, but I do have one. Okay. And so it's you really big. Yeah. So it's not a great display piece unless they're mint. Okay. So you can find these that are sealed, unopened, and those sell for $10,000 wow. for a toy. Your stickers are a little peely, and you do have the box, which is good. In the condition, I think if you went to sell this now, you'd probably be looking at $2,500 to $3,500. So do you ever come down here in the basement and just play with your G.I. Joes? Of course I do that with this. Recently, I made my own <laughs> set of Village People G.I. Joe figures where they say YMCA. Oh, I love it. Coming up on Collector's Call, Alan's collection takes flight. And later, Kate puts some exact figures on Alan's action figures. You know Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need? Oh, like how I customized this scarf? Wow, first time? Check out this backpack I made for Marco. Oh, yeah? Well, check out this tux. Oh, nice. That'll go perfect with these. Dude, those are so fire. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. We're with toy shop owners Alan and Diana as Alan shows off his massive collection of all things G.I. Joe. I started collecting when I was eight years old, and then I've stopped, I guess, when I die. <laughs> Joining us today is our expert, Kate, who's brought along a rare item to trade. Will Alan accept, or will she wave the white flag and surrender? But first, there's more Joe to go. So tell me about this helicopter. This is a G.I. Joe Tomahawk from 1986. My aunt passed right after she bought this for me. Oh. So it's very important. So that's the original box? Yes. So did you know to keep the box as a kid? Not particularly, but I had two of these toys, so I was able to keep one stored. The one that my aunt gave me was really important to me, so I wanted to keep it nice. So how much would this have retailed for, you know? $34.99. How much is it worth now? Tenfold. Three to four hundred dollars. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. These were played with. And the fact that you didn't buy this along the way and you actually did play with this, that's amazing. My brother had this toy, and the propellers broke almost upon opening it. It was a very active toy, but his is in really great condition. So what is this? This is a Sears Cobra Missile Command Center. How 
old is it? This is from 1982. <gasps> wow, that is an amazing shape to be so really kind of flimsy and old. Yes, and not really meant to keep, I don't believe. In my opinion, I think most kids would have played with this for a week and throw it away. It's not the easiest on the eyes, but it is the most fragile. And when you have something fragile, it's unbroken, it's like, that's my Fabergé egg in the middle of my G.I. Joe collection. And what is its connection to this other kind of old cardboard, empty box looking thing? <laughs> Another box? Mean, valuable collectible that Diana is holding. So this little box right here was the box that this box came with to put your little combat file cards in. Each character that they made, the comic book writer, Larry Hama, wrote a dossier, which was basically a file card on the back of each figure. And before that character ever showed up in a comic book or a cartoon, you got to know his personality traits. And do you have a lot of those? Yeah, I have everyone that oh I can my, get my hands on. Of course. So how much did you pay for this? I traded a Sectar Hive. I think I paid close to $500 for that Hive. Let's add this, too. So uh, how much did you spend on I spent $50 this? on the meats. spent meats. $50 on this. I spent $50 <laughs> on that piece of cardboard box. All right. Before I look to askance at a $500 cardboard puzzle background thingy, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask our expert, do I need to stand corrected? You wouldn't believe it, would you? But that was a good investment. <laughs> <laughs> that little piece of cardboard right there, it's got a couple dents. It mm -hmm. could be in a little yeah. bit better condition. If he went to sell it right now, just that little box, you'd probably bring him about $100. All right, double your money. Then it's down to the cardboard oh. backdrop. It's in beautiful condition. So if he went to sell this today, I'd almost guarantee he'd be between $1,000 and $1,500 for a piece of cardboard. With no box. So you can imagine what the unpunched with the box would be worth. <laughs> I'll be looking for some old boxes. Well, this is not how I remember G.I. Joe. How do you remember G.I. Joe? Not in space. This is a hardhead version of G.I. Joe, and the space outfit is actually just an outfit. This is a common, regular issue infantry G.I. Joe. And Re some of the G.I. Joes are more hard-headed than others? <laughs> the early ones, they painted the hair. And one other really kind of bizarre tall tell sign that you know it's a real G.I. Joe is the fingernails backwards on one of the hands. The fingernails backwards? Yeah, it's so that they knew if another company was copying their toy. What a strange thing, purposely putting a backwards fingernail on the figure. Couldn't somebody just copy a backwards fingernail? So this is the hard head mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. This is the Chia Pet version. <laughs> yeah. Clock <laughs> hair is what they call it. Mm -hmm. They're not easy to keep the hair on. And then maybe a year or two later, they gave them beards. So it these actually, are one of the original ones. How did you get these? This one I actually got as a Christmas present from a former boss. Mm -hmm. And that one was from one of my dear friends who loves the 12-inch G.I. Joes. He helped me find this one. So how much did you have to pay for that one? A hundred. A hundred? I'm no expert, but I play one on TV. And so <laughs> I am guessing that those are both worth pretty penny. And he, he did pretty good with $100. Yeah, he did very well with $100. So this one was gifted to you. It came in the spacesuit, not in his original. I had to build some of those spacesuits. Over time, okay. I had to get the gloves, okay. I had to get the booties. I'm really impressed by the hair on that one because I haven't seen one without a bald spot. So if you were to go and sell these and you have the pieces, although it's been piecemealed together, it's not original, I'd say $250 to $300 a piece on those. This surprises me. I mean, G.I. Joe is iconic. So one of the original years, I would think I'd be even worth more. The hot collector actually is with the small guys. Okay. It's not the big ones. <laughs> See, you want to tell yeah. I don't Even though know those anything. are in really good condition for how old they are, mm -hmm. this is where the collection okay. lies. Wow. I will not quit my day job. That's <laughs> <laughs> Up next, Kate puts dollar signs to Alan's front lines. And later, Kate's come ready to trade on the battlefield. But will Alan say no Joe right, right or you. yo Joe? Find out next on Collector's Call. After Collector's Call, MeTV continues collecting memories. Collecting memories is America's favorite pastime. With MASH. That's coming up next. 
There are too many burgers out there, so Arby's doesn't make burgers. But there aren't enough Wagyu burgers, so Arby's made an exception. Get wrecked, bad burgers. Arby's, we have the meat. Living with metastatic breast cancer means being relentless because every day matters. And having more of them is possible with Fresenio, the only one of its kind proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with fulvestrant, regardless of menopause status. Fresenio plus fulvestrant is for HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer that has progressed after hormone therapy. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an antidiarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing breathing or heart rate, or if you are nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Every day matters, and I want more of them. Ask your doctor about every day for Zenio. Hi, I'm Jeff from Nuts.com. When my grandfather started this business, he relied on freshness, quality, variety, and service. We still deliver the freshest nuts, dried fruits, snacks, and sweets to families all around the country. Nuts.com. Enjoy free shipping on your first order. Your personal information gets exposed so often, you might as well be hanging in a museum. Everyday activities like online shopping, banking, and even data breaches may expose your information and make it dangerously easy to have your identity stolen. No wonder there's a new victim every three seconds. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. Felt really devastating, frightened, because I had no control. And the ways identity thieves can steal and use your information are constantly evolving. Someone used my information to open up bank accounts in my name. It was terrifying, not knowing what was out there and what had been opened. Watching your accounts or monitoring your credit may not be enough, but protecting your identity can be easy with LifeLock, a leader in identity theft protection. LifeLock monitors threats to your identity, and if an issue is detected, sends you an alert. It was a big yes or a big no button. I clicked, that's not me, and LifeLock took it from there. If you are a victim of identity theft, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. I don't know what I would have done without my restoration specialist. And you'll be covered by the LifeLock Million Dollar Protection Package, including reimbursement for stolen funds, personal expenses, and coverage for lawyers and experts if needed. With the Million Dollar Protection Package, I know LifeLock has me covered. It can be dangerously easy to steal your identity, but now, it's easy to help protect yourself. I realize identity theft can happen to anybody, so that's why I signed up for LifeLock. Join the millions of people already protected by LifeLock, and for a limited time, save 25% with promo code 25TV. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call 1-800-416-2286 or go to lifelock.com slash 25TV and use promo code 25TV to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. Today, we're barreling through the trenches of Alan's expansive G.I. Joe collection. But before we hear Kate's final appraisal, let's take a look at a comic book with actions that really do speak louder than words. So this is a comic book. Did the comic book come before the action figures or vice versa? So the G.I. Joe comic book came before the cartoon and then before the toys, but just split seconds from each other. So what is the special about this one? So someone in Marvel literally lost an entire comic book. Before computers and everything, they would pass off their drawings and stuff to each other, and they were down a comic. So Larry Hama, the guy who wrote the G.I. Joe comic books, he had to whip this thing together. And the way he was able to do it in such a fast time, there's no words, no word bubbles. Oh. It's a silent issue. A lot of comics have come along and copied this. They still make reprints of it this day. Wow! When I read comic books, I didn't really pay attention. I was always just reading the bubbles. That one, you read the action. You read the person's body language. So how long ago did you get this one? Well, I bought this in 1984. Wow, long time ago. Yeah, It's long in good time condition. Ago. Do you know how much you paid for this? Um... You paid 60 <laughs> cents. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> 
So 60 cents, it's in mint condition. It seems pretty rare. I'm setting it up for you, Kate. Tell us. It's not been graded. So, very important thing with comic books, with playing cards, with even figurines, if you're going to sell them for a premium, the people that are going to buy them for a premium want them graded. Depends on who's buying it, though. Yeah. Is a dealer buying it or is yeah. a collector buying it? Yeah. If a dealer were to buy this book, I would probably say, without it being graded, somewhere in the $300 to $400 range. Just keep in mind, he says he has quite a few of these. They're now 300. This just one comic book alone, that's gonna add up. This may be the most valuable collection we've ever had. So Alan, we reached out to someone who I've heard you refer to a few times and he wanted to show his appreciation back. So he recorded a little special video for you. Hello, Alan, this is Larry Hama. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hasbro has referred to me as the godfather of G.I. Joe. I'd like to congratulate you for being on Collector's Call and thank you for being such an ardent, loyal fan all these years. Wishing you many more happy years of collecting. Yo, Joe. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's so wonderful. One of my all-time oh heroes. My gosh. Wonderful <laughs> to see that, yeah. <laughs> you are awfully touched about it. Oh, yeah, because I know how much it means to him. <laughs> I was a sick child. One of the reasons I'm a huge toy fan is because when kids were outside playing, I was sick inside playing with toys. So Larry helped me get through a very tough childhood. So knowing that he's reaching out to me now, it was just so touching. He helped me 30 years ago in a way he'll never know. So this is the point we are asking our expert to give evaluation on your entire collection. We set the bar way high with 100,000 pieces here, but you've seen a lot of the individual pieces. Today we saw the 1986 Snake Eyes figure, the G.I. Joe USS Flag aircraft carrier, the G.I. Joe Tomahawk, the Sears store exclusive Cobra Missile Command Center, the 12-inch Astronauts, and the silent issue of the G.I. Joe comic book. This, this is, is unfair. <laughs> I know, it is. Think about, if you have 100,000 pieces and they were 2 to $4 a piece, and you have the different variations of every character. So this is going to be <laughs> an expert guesstimate for you. It is so finely curated. Probably 3 to $4 million. 3 to $4 million? You retire now. <laughs> But we got to find someone crazy enough to, to buy, buy it all. all. Exactly. <laughs> and I know this guy named Alan. Luckily, he would love him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have 100,000 items. You're probably thinking, well, I don't need one more. But we put her on the hunt for something you don't have. Were you successful? Obviously, You've got quite the arsenal, but I happen to know someone who is also a G.I. Joe collector. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, what is it that you need to make your collection feel complete? And mm -hmm. what he doesn't have, shockingly enough, is the flag. Oh. He and you have, have three, right? I do have a few mm -hmm. flags. However, he is a collector, so I'd want that box. That's why I asked about it. Yeah. Okay. So I want the box with it. Alan mentioned that he has three of them. I know there's sentimental value behind it, but I think what I'm gonna pull out of my sleeve, he'll be happy to give it up. What I brought for you from him. Oh, oh Diana. <laughs> Diana. Oh, oh, she recognizes. I looked it. around and I said, yes, he doesn't have it. <laughs> then I found one. Uh-huh. But I have an upgrade. What is it? So this is Snake Eyes, this mm -hmm. is 82, but this is version 3, which you did look around and saw that I have. Uh-huh. But I believe I have the 82 straight arm. This is 83 swivel arm. Whoa, so does that sweeten the deal here? Coming up, will Alan have eyes for the Snake Eyes and let Kate bag the flag? We'll find out next on Collector's Call. Next week on Collector's Call, The Final Frontier, a Star Trek collection. Let's yes. go where no collector has gone before. Oh, that was good. I thought so. Sunday at 6.30, 5.30 Central. Live along and prosper. How is he still playing? 
Aspercream Arthritis. Full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Don't touch my piano. Kick pain in the Aspercream. In a world where temptation lurked around every corner, a league of baby bell cheese helped us realize another snack was possible. Baby Bell, join the goodness. Guys, I've got a very serious question. Are you tired of worrying about hair loss? Are you tired of looking in the mirror and not loving the man you see looking back at you? If the answer is yes and you want to get your real hair back, I want you to take out your phone that I know is sitting right next to you and send that text down below to Bosley to get the free Bosley info kit. You're also going to get the $250 Bosley gift card. It is a huge no-brainer because Bosley is America's number one hair restoration experts. Do you think these guys are happy they went to Bosley? Bosley uses the latest technology and science to give you your real hair back permanently. And that's a promise backed by the Bosley Guarantee. Guys, you deserve to feel incredible about yourself, and you deserve to have your real hair back. Bosley can make it happen. They are going to help you love the way you look. But you need to take action. For your free information kit and free gift card for $250 off, text EAST to 642-642. Ask about the Bosley Guarantee. Text EAST to 642-642. Expectations come with the territory. But raising expectations, that comes with determination. Pushing ourselves further, lifting others even higher. And knowing that recognition isn't given, it's earned. I'm a Ram now. Ram, J.D. Power's number one brand and new vehicle quality. Thousands of years ago, even if you were sitting at the top, you really couldn't count on support. It took centuries for office seating to evolve, but there were some major holes in the design. Then people were inspired to do away with office chairs completely. Yeah, that didn't work. In 2020 came the breakthrough the world has been waiting for. The first ever XHMT heat and massage chair by X-Chair. X-Chair just made history's most comfortable work chair even better by integrating heat and massage into our patented dynamic variable lumbar support. Waves of glorious massage that wake up tired muscles? Yes. Soothing heat that melts away daily tension? You bet. The all-new XHMT massage chair by X-Chair. The future feels good. Upgrade to the ultimate work chair with the one and only XHMT by X-Chair. Use the code on your screen and get $100 off plus a free footrest. Tonight on the Summer of Me, it's MASH, followed by Perry Mason, the TV movies, and the Ed Sullivan Show. That's on the way on MeTV. Expert Kate has just offered G.I. Joe collector Alan the chance to upgrade his Snake Eyes figure in exchange for one of Alan's favorite childhood toys, the USS Flag aircraft carrier. And of course, the box. I was really excited about that Snake Eyes. I don't see Snake Eyes men on card very often. Is that something well, you'd I like mean... to have? I would do it in Harpy if you didn't take my flag box. <laughs> <laughs> So you're willing to trade, but you don't want to give up your box? I get a box easier than I get a mint on card, snake eyes, anything. You have three flags. So, what do we think? These are harder to find than a flag box. And the fact that you have it here in mint condition, I mean, this is mint condition. And it's graded. Only because it's my childhood flag, I got to keep it. All right. Oh, I'm pulling at those heartstrings. <laughs> pulling at those heartstrings. Sentimental heart reasons. I understand. I if understand. If I didn't already have a version one snake eyes, I'm, right. I'm out here right now with it, yeah. <laughs> I really thought I had a strong trade on this one because it's in such better condition, but I get it. The memories mean more than the item. Maybe someday he'll sell the other two and go buy the one that I gave him. And you might know me from my time on television. Now I'm traveling the country, meeting people with the most amazing collections we can find. Welcome, Lisa, and the collector's call. What a fantastic collection you have. Oh, no. Is that a rare collectible? Without a box? Somebody, Somebody save, save us. us. Help, help. Condition vintage. Hooray, we're saved. Ah, 
It's back in the box and factory sealed. And it has picture-proof provenance.